the world started, um, dinosaurs died, and then accountants talked about putting operating leases on balance sheets. This is how one of the top four started, or big four accountancy firms started one of their presentations recently. Um, we know it's been coming for some time, but that steam train is coming over the hill quite quickly. And we wanted to work out what business thought about it and what it's going to, how it's going to change the pattern of the, of the UK property industry. In fact, any property industry for that matter. Um, so we, we started by wanting to ask the question about own, own versus lease, because at the end of the day, that is, that's, the, that's really what this is all about. Um, we, we asked, or Ipsos Mori asked the respondents of the, of the survey, what percentage of their buildings or properties were owned rather than leased? Rather basic question. The answer we got back was a bit confusing. In fact, um, there was no real clear answer other than some people owned and some people leased. And in fact, they generally did one or the other, and there isn't very much in the middle. Um, in fact, it's probably a function of, of historical circumstance, probably a bit of M&A activity. Um, but interesting enough, when you dig a little deeper, there, is a f there are a few patterns coming through. Um, we see, actually, 17% of office occupiers only, uh, occupy, uh, own their, their real estate, whereas 40% of industrial occupiers own what they occupy. Um, so there's a little bit of a divergence. What's interesting is actually bigger companies generally lease everything. Smaller companies generally own everything. Well, again, I think that probably tells us there isn't a clear strategy except for probably in the bigger companies who are perhaps uh, the most efficient at recycling shareholder capital. Um, but this all changed on the 17th of August. I don't want to be too dramatic about it, but the International Accounting Standards Board and the Federal Accounting Standards Boards, I, everyone except America and America, finally got together and decided to put an accounting standard out, a sta accounting standard out for the first time together. <clears throat> and what they said is that we're going to put all your leases on your balance sheet, occupiers, and no longer can you hide it in the P&L. Well, we wanted to know how much impact that was ha having on our clients or our prospective clients. So we asked in the survey, um, who actually knows anything about the fact that you're going to have to capitalise your leases on your balance sheet? Well, I'm delighted to say two-thirds said yes. Interestingly, just about a third said no, and a third said they didn't know that they didn't know, which is an interesting response. Um, <laughs> So um, we, we then went on to say, well, if, for those who do know that this, is, this steam train is coming, um, what impact is it going to have on your behaviour? Um, and I think, interestingly enough, roughly a half said, well, we don't think it's going to change our behaviour. A third said they will only sign shorter leases, and the rest either want to own or they don't really know what they're going to do. In fairness, this announcement came out on the 17th of August, halfway through the interview process. So give the benefit of the doubt, I think the early respondents wouldn't have real, perhaps realised what was really coming down the line. Everybody seems to think this is about leases going on the balance sheet. In fact, that's what I've been describing it as. But actually, the real message is about the P&L account. And I'm going to take two minutes, and I'm only allowed two minutes by Michael to explain what this is, why this is relevant. One brief example, if I may. If, if you go and sign a new lease for 15 years, as many people in the room will have done, and it's got an annual rent of 100, for the sake of argument, um, then you're required to, take, to calculate the, the, the present value of that to put a, an asset and a, a liability on your balance sheet. And you have to use your incremental borrowing rate. All these are terms in the accounting standard. Well, that creates an asset and a liability on your balance sheet, day one, if you assume that's an 8% borrowing rate, of £856. Very basic. What does that actually mean? Well, today, if you sign a lease and you put £100 through your P&L account, P account, it looks like that. £100 for 15 years, totaling £1,500. Pretty straightforward. Tomorrow, or in fact when this standard comes in, it, sometime over the next 18 months, it'll be split into two parts. First of all, you need to amortise the asset side and you need to pay off the, the liability side in a profile. The asset side amortises at a straight line, £57 um, a year in this particular example. But the sting in the tail is that the interest on the liability side looks a bit like a repayment mortgage. And this is where it really begins to hurt. Because day one, your P&L charge goes from here to here. In this case, that's a 26% hike in your P&L costs for your real estate day one. And if you have... 
a 20-year lease at the time of your the first time adoption, and you've got 10 years unexpired, it treats it as a new 10-year lease. So day one, your PL is going to be hit very hard. This is this is the steam train coming over the hill. We've analyzed the publicly reported accounts of one major UK retailer whose pre-tax profit of £115 million, if it was adopted today, would go to a £20 million loss. They've come in to see us about it, and they've agreed with our calculation. That's the steam train that's coming over the hill. Just to remind you, pre and post, it's still £1,500. So, what are the implications for real estate for that little lot? Well, I think fairly obviously there's no opportunity for off-balance sheet finance anymore. All real estate decisions will be absolutely transparent. Gone are the days where you can get an extra little bit of rent-free, thank you very much indeed for signing that nicer, longer lease, because you're going to be paying for it day one. We think, we think, the initial, initial analysis is that occupiers will want to start, sign shorter leases. But of course you've got to depreciate your fit out so there's a diametrically opposed force there. So what's actually going to work out in the, in the wash? And we're not quite sure. There may be more incident of ownership. Is that an effective deployment of capital? Does that drive shareholder value? Not sure. But what we are absolutely certain is it is going to be a massive burden on occupiers to account for it going forward. Because those who are publicly listed, they have to do this exercise not every, not every year, but every single reporting period. And if that means you're a US-listed company, that's every single quarter. 